much, and Representative Lula. Thank you very much. You know, I didn't expect to see this many people, so I'm thrilled that you're all here. Um, and first, let me tell you a little about me, so you know what the heck I'm all about. I've been in the Illinois House for 22 years. I live in Skokie. Anyone know where that is? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, and I've represented that community for that period of time. I've chaired numerous different committees in the Illinois House. I currently serve as the Democratic floor leader in the Illinois House, which is the equivalent of a whip in Washington. And uh, I serve as the Deputy Majority Leader of the Illinois House, two steps below Speaker Madigan. So just so you know that um, when I took on this bill, it, it got a little more gravitas than it's gotten in previous years. Having said all that, um, why do I have this bill? Well, there's a number of reasons. First, I was the only person in my fraternity in college who never smoked a joint. Um, and so I get calls every day from old high school friends and old college friends and they say, you? You have this bill? You're the guy? That's right, I'm the guy. I'm the only guy awake enough to handle the bill. So, but, speaking more seriously, of course, we know why this is important. A lot of people want to talk about this as a issue about drugs. This is not an issue about drugs. It's an issue about health care. How many in the room know a person who could use medical marijuana if it was available? Virtually everyone in the room. People who are in pain, people who have severe nausea from their cancer treatments, people with glaucoma and Crohn's disease and severe migraine headaches and on down the line. And they all want this. Now we all know that some of them are taking this now illegally. In fact, even if we pass this law, it will be illegal under federal law. Fortunately, we have a president of the United States who says, screw federal law, we're not going to enforce this on a federal level. So states that want to go ahead and pass this, go ahead and pass it. And I think that was wise for President Obama because you know this United States Congress is not going to change that law. So we have to do it state by state. And as you know, I think 16 states now, with New Jersey adding it a few weeks ago, now have medical marijuana laws. And people say, well, it must be just the liberal states. Yes, like Montana, <laughs> who has uh, legalized uh, medical marijuana. So it isn't just liberal states. It's all kinds of states, enlightened states, people that want to treat this as a product to help people who are sick. And that's what it's all about. And so, there have been two different versions of this bill. The original version I passed in the House is not Senate Bill 1381. I didn't pass it. The original bill I introduced in the House. It's a much more expansive bill. I think it would be a better bill if we can pass it, but we can't. And so what we learn in Springfield and what they learned in Washington is sometimes you can't get all of what you want. If you take a look at what's going on in Washington now on health care, you understand that. Sometimes you have to take what you can get. Sometimes you have to take a small bite of the apple this year and another bite next year, and pretty soon, look at that, I've eaten the apple. So that's what we're trying to do here. What does this bill do that passed the Senate? Very simply, it says that if a doctor says you need this product, you can go to the Department of <coughs> Public Health and have them issue you and a caregiver a permit that would allow you to possess three marijuana plants. Not 3,000, not 103, three. Three. And you'll hear all kinds of people say, well, you can make eight million joints out of three plants. And I say, go away. <laughs> right? Because it's not about the joints, it's about the sick people that need the marijuana. And then they say, well, what about Marinol? Well, doctors will tell you Marinol doesn't even work for most people, right? And so we, the Senate version of this bill narrows it down that much. And yet, law enforcement is opposed. And so I have some very conservative friends in the House who say to me, well, law enforcement's opposed, so I have to be opposed. Really? That I point out to them that anything in the state of Illinois that's ever been illegal ever, whatever it is, according to law enforcement, should never be made legal. 
because their job, that's their job. Their job is to arrest people for breaking the law, and if you make too many things legal, they're out of work. And so nothing that's ever been illegal will be supported by law enforcement to be made legal. And then we get my friends that say, in fact, the state representative who lives not too far from where we're sitting now says, well, you know, representative. During the Bush administration, there was a whole national report about the evils of marijuana. Really? What administration was that? The Bush administration. Okay, so do I really have to read that? I don't think so. Bottom line is that legislators will find any reason to vote no. They don't think about the public policy of health care. They think about the policy of how do I get reelected. They're looking for any excuse to vote no, and as soon as they find one, they hang their head on that hook, and they're done with me. And so they talk about marijuana addiction, please. They talk about law enforcement. They talk about teenagers getting a hold of marijuana, like they can't anyway, right? They talk about all kinds of reasons to be opposed, because they're worried about their next election. I have talked to every one of the 118 members of the Illinois House of Representatives. We need 60 votes to pass the bill. 92 members of the Illinois House have said to me, right to my face, that's a really good bill, I hope you pass it. Sounds like enough to pass the bill, right? Only 48 of those 92 people are willing to vote for the bill. 48 out of 92. I have to convince 12 of them to do the right thing, to get beyond the politics. And it's really interesting because of the 118 members of the House, 90 plus of them live in totally safe districts. They couldn't lose their next election if they took a machine gun and cut everybody down in their downtown neighborhood. 90 plus of them are going to win their next election no matter what they vote for, taxes, no taxes, marijuana, no marijuana, doesn't matter, they're going to get reelected. But they're gutless. They're gutless. And when I stick a poll in front of them that says 68% of Illinoisans believe that this is a good law, it doesn't matter. And when I go to the most conservative members and I say to them, look at this, 64% of Republicans in this state think we ought to pass this law. They go, yes, but law enforcement, and yes, but addiction, and yes, but whatever. Even when I point out to them that in the history of the world, not a single person has ever died from a marijuana overdose, they don't care. And when I point out to them that the things that these patients are taking today to relieve their pain, or try to, to relieve their nausea, or try to, very addictive, very dangerous narcotics, Oxycontin, morphine, Vicodin. And I say, you're not worried that jars and bottles and vials of these medicines are in parents' medicine chests? You're worried that a kid is going to take a marijuana leaf and smoke it? And you're not worried that someone's going to take Vicodin and kill themselves? Well, Representative, they're not supposed to do that. That's right. They're not supposed to do that. Shame, shame, shame. But they do it every day. We all know about people who overdose on the medications that are out there today that are legal. And yet there's a product on the market, or could be on the market in Illinois, that would relieve their pain, relieve their problems, help them live a better life, that won't hurt them not going to hurt them. And it's a shame that legislators won't just simply won't do the right thing. Um, and I've talked to these patients and they call me and their stories are sad. I had one legislator say to me, also from DuPage County, as long as we're here, she said to me, you know, representative, she went like this, you know, representative, smoking is bad for you. I said, so the 80-year-old lady with colon cancer who needs this, who's terminal, we're going to worry that she's going to take a couple of puffs of a marijuana joint? We're going to worry about her lung cancer that she doesn't have and not worry about the colon cancer that she does have? 
the responses I get are appalling. They're appalling. Now, not everything about this is sad. Some of it's funny. 